Gladstone City Commission meeting, Monday, February 10th, 2014, 7 p.m. is called to order. First item is invocation, which I will lead. To bow our heads, please. God, we ask you to look over this meeting tonight. We ask you to give us guidance, to give us wisdom, and to give us understanding as we wrestle with common public problems and to listen to each other. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Pledge of allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Mackey? Here. Commissioner Bostwick? Here. Commissioner Gay? Here. Commissioner Matinin? Commissioner Matinin is, ex is excused. Next item on our agenda is public comment, but before. Commissioner Nemechek. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. Pays <laughs> <laughs> to listen. Next item on our agenda is public comment, but before we get to that, we'd like to do a. Um, we're not going to do, are we? We are? No, we're not going to do it. Okay. <coughs> we are going to go to public comment. So, anybody who has any comments, if you would go to the podium, state your name and address, we would be open to listening to that right now. Hearing none, we go to the consent agenda, which consists of the City Commission regular meeting minutes of January 27, 2014, the Parks and Recreation regular meeting minutes of January 7, 2014, and payment of bills, which are presented to us tonight. Moved approved. Support. Moved by Commissioner Gay, supported by Commissioner Nemechek to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion is carried. Public hearings? We have none tonight. We have nothing listed under unfinished business, so we move to new business. The first item is a Gladstone Robotics Run Walk. This application was presented um, to City Hall here for this is their, it's an annual event held by the Ro Gladstone Robotics team. It's for a 5K run walk to be held Saturday, March 1st from 10.30 to 11.30. The course route was enclosed in the map here, same route as before. Um, up from the high school, they come down Braves Avenue, down around North Buff Drive, and then go back to the high school. It's been approved by our, all our department heads. So I recommend approval. I make a motion we approve this 5K run walk on March 1st. Support. Moved by Commissioner Bostwick, supported by Commissioner Gay to approve the bot trot. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, that motion is carried. We are introducing tonight and setting a public hearing on a proposed new ordinance. It would be Ordinance 593, which is parking and storage of recreational vehicles and recreation equipment. Uh, we held a forum on Monday, January 27th to get some public input. I'd say there was a fair amount of public input at that meeting. That forum input that we received from the public was shared with the Planning Commission on Tuesday, February 4, 2014. They are recommending approval of this ordinance to the City Commission. So tonight we're looking to introduce and set the public hearing for this ordinance on March 10, 2014. And this uh, will be published in a paper that we will be having this public hearing. Um, and we have some supporting documentation. It says RV Forum Minutes Proposed Ordinance Number 593 Letter Received 2-5-2014 from Mr. and Mrs. Brandt to be placed on the record for the public hearing. So that will be part of the public hearing as well. Uh, I don't know that I don't know that anybody'd be interested in public comment right now, but if if there's anybody who'd like some preliminary comment before the public hearing, you're certainly welcome to uh, go to the podium and and address the commission. We'd be listening tonight as well. But. Not so. I guess we're looking for a motion to set a public hearing tonight. Uh, well, I think March 10th is too soon to be having the hearings. What I would you suggest? 
either the last week of April the 28th or May 12th because a lot of people who are, you know, snowbirds aren't going to be here, so they're not going to know anything. I received a change. phone call from a snowbird tonight who's a very good friend of mine, and he felt like uh, he would like to be in the community for public input when, when it is discussed. If I remember right, however, at the, point, at the f public forum we had, staff was recommending that we do this sooner because you wanted to get it set f so that it would be enforceable in summer if it does get approved. So, uh, obviously, we set the rules. So, does staff have a problem with later? I know the discussion at the public hearing was, was that the concern that snowbirds, you know, would be out of the area. We just... We'd like to have something in place, whatever the commission may decide right. on this, for the season, though, however, to try to address some of the problems on the city streets. So whatever that process <coughs> entails, the city clerk would know that best as far as when, you know, if we have a hearing in in May or, or April, um, how long after that. If, you know, if, if we have a hearing and then the commission decides to put it back to the committee, you know, the planning commission or whatever, then we could be, you know, without something for this, this summer, so to speak. But I, I would be inclined to, uh, I'd be inclined to say that we need to continue to move on this. Um, I understand your concern, uh, but we, this, this has been, this has been, this question has been asked before. It's been gone over before. Um, if we do end up, you know, making a recommendation, as Director Geyer indicated, and going back to committee, that's going to take additional time before we can bring that back and finally, hopefully, get it implemented as he, you know, stated before the season actually starts. So I, I would, I would move that we set a public hearing for March 10th, 2014, the regular commission meeting, um, with an extra publication of the public hearing notice and the action news. I heard a motion. I didn't hear a support. Support. I heard a support. Commissioner Gay moves and Commissioner Nemechek supports to set a public hearing for March 10th for proposed ordinance 593. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. That motion carries three ayes, one nay. What would be the um the, the probable uh, uh, final date that the commission would vote on it. Next meeting for the public hearing on March 10th, right? Or not the next meeting, but the March 10, 2014. It could be voted on that night. Correct. And then um, <coughs> 10 days after publication in the newspaper, whenever you pass an ordinance, it's required to be published in the newspaper, a summary of it. So that would take place in the action paper on the, the 15th, Saturday the 15th and 16th. So it wouldn't go into effect 10 days in the after that. So okay. March 26th, if you approved it at the 10th meeting, is when it would go into effect. Thank you. And one, of the, one of the other items that was discussed in the, uh, in the forum that we had was the process for enforcement on this initially being, uh, Director Geyer indicated that initially it would be a uh, educational approach until, you know, obviously multiple infractions would I'm sure warrant uh, further action, but initially to let people know this is our new ordinance and this is how you need, this is, you need to put this in an appropriate place or you have a limited time in which to have this vehicle here. Um, so I, I think that would, that would allow him to immediately, once this is passed, uh, start that educational process for the residents. And at that March 10th meeting, as, as Paul was um, mentioning that if the commission chose to kick it back to committee, obviously that's an option, or not to approve it at that time and go another course. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I would urge everybody to get your friends and neighbors who feel strongly about this issue to uh, give any commissioner a call, give us an email. We have email addresses uh, to attend the meeting, to send a letter, uh, so that we get a lot of public input for that for that matter. I have a question. Can you can you can you take a voting, please? 
I can't remember your name. Yeah. Uh, um, that two week stay thing, how is that going to be enforced? You know, like you can get up and where do you get that permit? Well, that would be our public safety director. You're and talking we, about the being used for two weeks within a calendar yeah, year, yeah. so to speak. I mean, that looks to me to be almost impossible to enforce. I well, mean, if we, it would be primarily complaint driven. Uh, the one gentleman who was here at the uh, at the forum that we had uh, stated that the you know the the, the couple of campers that he was complaining. Yes, about I can. He had, a, he had a he had a legitimate grape. I got to admit that he has a legitimate grape. There. I think that's how we would try to address those. We've had some complaints in the past that that campers or RVs have been used as housing units, so to speak, for an entire summer. And obviously, over the course of a, of a period of time for us, we could try to um, observe that and witness that in certain areas and try to address it that way. Because and I know the fact of us trying to to set a date in the calendar for every RV in the in the town is not my goal or intention on this. Is to deal with those problem. But that's what the letter of the law is going to state. Letter of the law says that you get a ticket for driving 56 miles an hour as yep. well, and that doesn't always happen. Uh, I, I know what it says. Um, but I know, you know like I, I said, I, I know a lot of people like up on the bluff that have their campers and their kids stay in them just about every night and every weekend in, in the summertime. You know, is that going to be enforced? And I know one person that they don't have air conditioning in their house and they actually sleep in their camper because it has air conditioning in the summertime. Well, and that's, that's certainly something that we can address at the public hearing again on, on March 10th. If that's something that the commission wants to put back to the planning committee and say, we don't want this in this, in this proposed ordinance, we certainly can go that route. It, the, the intent of the language of that part of the ordinance um, is to eliminate the problems of people using it as a housing unit, so to speak, for an entire portion of time and being you know, some even had, we had issues where, you know, they, they had a line into the storm sewer as well. So, I mean, we dealt with that on a separate issue. But well, can, can I ask that th this is more kind of public hearing kind of thing. Yeah. At the public hearing, th this is the kind of input we'll be looking for. And you've given Paul some heads up on some items there that you're going to, you're going to be facing at the That's public hearing. That's so. what I could really see as a problem trying to enforce that I understand. Portion of it. I understand. So... If I, we I would just encourage everybody that has concerns on specific sections or whatever to get get the uh, letters or emails or, or concerns to the city clerk so she, you know she can have them for the commission. We can okay. Try to address them. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Uh, with the commission's uh, permission, I'd like to divert here for a minute away from the agenda now that Alice has made a town meeting. <laughs> you held us up, Alice. Um, we have Alice Butch, Gary LaPlante, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Deb Milliken from the Community Foundation who are going to make a presentation tonight from uh, the late Dr. Mary Creighton's trust fund that she so generously left behind and we do an awful lot of really good things with, so we're very glad to have that presentation tonight. So turn it over to you, Mr. LaPlante, or to Alice, whichever one. Sure. <coughs> Well, it's just a real, real pleasure to be able to uh, present you with this check. It's for $166,979.65. I think that's and more than last year, isn't it? Okay. Well, the stock market must have done better. <laughs> well, you didn't hear what Gary told me before the meeting, but we'll get back to that later. Don't listen to him. Uh. <laughs> yes, sir. Anyway, it's my pleasure to be able to present this to you on behalf of the Mary Cretans Trust. And Thank you, Mrs. Butch. I apologize for being late. <laughs> Better late than never. When you got a check like that, we'll wait. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? I got a big check. Yes. Could we have the uh, photo op now? With, you have the real check, and now we have our ceremonial check. You and the city manager. Sure. And if you want the whole council, I think the whole council should come. Whole council. Out. Oh. Where are we going to go over here?
I didn't know until this morning. Is everybody back? <laughs> All right, we're back to the agenda that's before us tonight. We have the Gladstone Housing Commission Declaration of Trust. Our housing director, Michael Lindahl, will be present, present to explain the request. So take it over, Mr. Lindahl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what I'll do first is I'm going to put a little slide presentation on. Uh, and speak during it, uh, but what I normally do is when I ever give a presentation to somebody, it's just kind of a, a slideshow showing what our house commission is, different aspects of it and that, so. I'll let it go through quick, it's very short. like without all the snow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do have excellent grounds there. If I was a neighbor, I'd be very happy to be living next door to that.
Is that a good looking guy? <laughs> I'll just let it run until after I'm done. Uh, the few pictures you'll see in there, I'll be talking about different things like that. But uh, what I'm here for is uh, our declaration of trust has now expired. And for us to continue to receive funding from HUD, we have to have a new declaration of trust put into place. I'll give you a little brief history of what's gone on, what's transpired. Um, excuse me while I read a little bit just so I don't miss anything. In 1966, the city of Glasgow incorporated the Glasgow Housing Commission under Frank Stupak as mayor. Uh, they, the object was to build low-income elderly and disabled persons housing. In 1967, Fairview Manor built, was built with 50 units. In 1968, the first declaration of trust and the annual contrib contributions contract, the ACC, were entered into with HUD, and the project was bonded and paid for by bonds uh, through HUD. The city of Glasgow did not pay any of the bonding whatsoever. Uh, HUD actually paid for the bonding. Okay, the declaration, second declaration of trust was in 1981, and then in 1982 and 1983, Bayview Manors were built with an additional 52 units. Uh, and around the 2011-2012 time frame, all the bonds were paid off, uh, and what it requires is when that bonding was paid off by HUD, the city, or actually I should say, the Housing Commission must operate for another 20 years, as we are. Okay, what the new Declaration of Trust does is that every time that we accept federal monies for the operations or uh, the capital funds of the Housing Commission, that extends that operation 20 more years. Uh, and unless they have that in place, they will not give us additional funding. So what they're doing is trying to make sure that the funds that they put into that Housing Commission will keep the Housing Commission going for at least another 20 years. Uh, okay, let's see. That's basically what the new Decla Declaration of Trust is. Uh, just a little bit of a high point of the way the Housing Commission operates down there. Uh, the Mayor of Glasgow actually appoints a five-person board who uh, in turn then uh, selects who the director is going to be. And uh, in this instance, I'm also the director and uh, the secretary of the board. And we operate much like the City Commission does. And I want to give a little shout out to Kim because she's been very helpful in my duties as secretary to learn all the ins and outs of what goes on. And it's, it's really incredible. And just to have to do with the different things like uh, Open Meetings Act, stuff like that. So if you look at the Housing Commission in Gladstone, it's basically a small little community within a community. And we operate pretty much the same way as the city does. Okay, let's see. Who's on the commission? Uh, at presently, Mary Bosk is our president. And we also have uh, Mark Letesian. We have Joni Sundstrom. We have Gary Maynard, and then we also have Daryl Mullins, who is a resident of the Housing Commission. And HUD uh, usually wants to have at least one member <coughs> of uh, the residents to be onto that board. Thank you. Okay. Uh, did you get a chance to read our attorney's opinion letter? No, I did not. Oh, you didn't? I did. You uh, well, it, it doesn't have any problems with right. the as, as far as I knew, there weren't any problems no. with it. it. It's a standard declaration of trust. Uh, but I, what I wanted to do is just make sure that the commission, it's been several years, I believe, since the uh, Housing Commission has come before this body and just to sh tell you and inform you what's going on down there and make you feel comfortable because you are entering into a situation where you're saying, okay, we're going to make sure that this runs for another 20 years. And if we don't do that, then there is a possibility of losing that property and that land <coughs> if, we if we default on it. So that's Because it would be encumbered with debt. Correct. Yep. But... Uh, to put the Commission's mind at ease right now, we're going to go into a little bit of the things. Uh, our annual operating budget right now at the Housing Commission currently is $495,000. Of that, 73% uh, of our budget actually comes from the rent that the residents pay. Uh, basically, what happens is that our top rent is $365 correctly, currently right now for a one-bedroom. And the resident will pay either that rent or 30% of what their resident's adjusted income is. So we actually have rents anywhere from $50 all the way up to $365 down there, depending on the income of the person. Uh, okay. Oh, and also the currently. The 73% rent, that represents rent, that's the operating budget? That's, of, of the operating budget. That doesn't, that's not going towards debt reduction? Debt reduction is already done. 
the, the buildings are completely paid off. HUD paid those buildings off back in the 2011-2012 time frame. Didn't get a specific date on when that actually happened. I guess happened. what I'm getting at is you're constantly doing capital projects. Correct. So that incurs debt, right? No. No? No. Uh, okay. If you'll give me a okay. minute, I'll, we'll, we'll go there. Okay. <clears throat> What's happening now currently is that... Uh, to live there, a person, a single person, cannot make more than a maximum of three hundred and seven. Excuse me, thirty thousand seven hundred dollars per person. That's after the adjusted gross income and assets. Uh, Twenty-seven percent of our funding right now comes in the form of HUD operating funds. Uh, as you know, uh, Washington has really not done a fantastic job of the sequester of funding a lot of things, and currently those operating funds are down to 82% since uh, 2012, which is an 18% cut in federal funding that we've had. So we're operating actually on less federal funding than we had back in 2012. But the good news is, is that uh, we also receive capital funds. Uh, we started out in 2009 with our capital funds being about 134000 uh, they've currently decreased, and this year our capital funding was only 78000 which was a decrease of about 42%. With that being said, right now our operating budget is on track. We, are, uh, we have no debt incurred. We currently have seven and a half months worth of cash reserves uh, to operate on, on top of our rents coming in, so we're in very good shape there. Uh, we have about 78000 in capital funds that have not been spent yet and we're expecting 2014 capital funds to come in. Uh, currently, our budget is running at about a 2% surplus for this year. So that uh, the commission is very well run down there, and I have to give the kudos to my uh, board. Uh, we have many people who, there who are either accountants or bank vice presidents and that, and so we watch a very tight rain on our budget. So uh, financially, we're very, very stable. I don't see any problems or anticipate any problems for the next five years. And it just depends on how the federal funds go, but we can still do a very good job of what we got there. Just to give you an idea, in the last five years, and the reason why I say it is I've only been there roughly five years, <clears throat> we spent approximately $1 million in upgrades down there on buildings and equipment. Those monies came from capital funds, cash reserves, and about uh, 200000 from grants that we had written. Uh, down there so far, what we've done in the past five years is we've put a new roof on Bayview Manor, We've done 50 new units of kitchen cabinets and bathroom vanities in Fairview. We've put a new water infiltration system in Fairview's basement, which stopped the leaks that we had in the basement. We've put in two new laundry rooms and updated two others in Bayview and Fairview. We've put in eight new boilers and four new hot water makers, both in Bayview and Fairview, so the hot water systems are completely up to date. Uh, we've replaced all the water, wastewater and heating piping in Fairview's basement and riser stacks, the main and as you know, uh, Baby was built in 1967, so we've had a lot of issues with plumbing and that. So we're trying to address those issues, and we've extended the life expectancy of those buildings by several years by doing this. We've put in two new fire systems in Bayview and Fairview. We've put in 93 new refrigerators in Bayview and Fairview. We've done new hallway lighting and attic insulation in Bayview. We've pulverized, repaved, and expanded the parking lots. Uh, we've replaced the emergency generator down there, which operates our boilers and our emergency lighting for the residents. Uh, let's see, we've upgraded our material storage handling capacities down there. We've purchased two new tractors and grounds equipment to keep the grounds up. We've purchased new furniture for the lobbies and community rooms in Fairview. Uh, we repaired and, replaced, re, uh, repaired and painted the exterior of Fairview and the garage. We've added 11 new gardening boxes for the residents, which they really enjoy because they, a lot of residents cannot bend over into a garden, so they actually elevated boxes that they can uh, do gardening in. And then we've, uh, let's see, we've also upgraded all our office equipment, computer systems, and software, uh, adding software for tracking of rentals, bad uh, debt collection, work orders, and payroll. So we've put quite a bit of money into the buildings down there so at least we've got a good start on down there so we can continue to operate as we are and i don't see us incurring any large debt coming at all which is good because there's a lot of housing commissions out there in the country right now that are having some problems but uh, for gladstone we're doing a very good job down there questions sure a question if the housing commission were to incur debt do they have to come to the city commission for permission no that's why the trust the, the, tr the trust is stating that we will continue to operate. The board that we have can incur that debt. Without the permission without be, of the city Without permission of the, permission of the but city. But the buildings, the property is owned by the city. 
No, the property is owned by the city. The buildings are officially owned by HUD. By HUD? By HUD. They're the ones who paid for them. Oh, I didn't realize now, that. Now, let's, let's get back to that 20-year trust. When you said, can they borrow money without the city's permission, I don't guess anybody would go beyond 20 years for lo loaning you money because you may not be in existence 20 years from now. Because we've just said tonight, if we approve this, you'll be in existence for another 20 years, right? We already are. Uh, right now... If you, if you went to a bank today and you said, can I, can I pay off a house over 30 years, your banker might get a little bit leery because of your age, right? True. Correct. Uh, the 20-year clock started ticking back in 2011, 2012 when the bonds were paid off. But we have, in the process, we've actually, actually accepted more money from the government to continue to operate and to continue to do capital improvements down there. So what they're looking at is to try to make sure that their interests are covered for another 20 years every time they give us funding. Okay, and the, about the only liability I can see to, and I'm not a lawyer, that I can see to the city is if we did default down there, we would lose the property and the buildings. I don't see us happening, that happening to us. Okay, okay. Uh, a couple other things, just quick kudos to the city. Uh, we've worked with uh, our city manager and our department heads, and we've had a very good relationship with them. They've been very understanding when we've had problems and come in. Uh, public uh, safety director uh, has uh, actually gone with us and we've put in what they call Knox boxes. And I don't know if your commissioner is familiar with the Knox box system. Uh, but what it is is that uh, if we have an emergency down there, they have a set of keys to certain boxes. They can open those boxes up and they can get a master set of keys. So in an event of emergency, they can enter the building, they can go to different parts of the building. And it's it saved a lot of headache and a lot of time for them. If they do have an emergency, they don't have to wait for uh, one of our maintenance guys to get there, someone to get there. I don't know, Paul, has that uh, worked out or if you guys had to use that at all? Or? Yeah, and I wish every business had it in the city. Okay. I mean, we have a system in place to where they can, businesses and, and even residences can, can uh, purchase Knox box systems that are master keyed for our, for our use in emergencies. and. Many communities have ordinances on the books that require it for new businesses just for safety concerns. But it's, it's been nice that you've done that because it has saved a lot of time in us getting there for medical concerns and, and different types of calls. Right. Uh, we've also worked with uh, Public, uh, public uh, Works Director uh, Barry Lund, and uh, what he's helped us with is the garbage. And that's really been a godsend since we've had the new garbage truck down there. Uh, what's happened is, is now that we're using, before we used to just have bags and cans out in place, now that we have the large containers, we just put them all in a row, bring them out there, and it's just, it's a very good system. And thank the city for the, the new upgrade in the garbage truck system. Now, I don't know about the rest of the residents, but I sure appreciate it. There's a maximum income, and that person wouldn't be able to pay the full shot and live there? You said there was a maximum right, right. income. There, there is a maximum 30, income. 30000 some odd dollars. Uh, for a single person right now, the current maximum income with assets, and it depends on what your assets are that are factored in there, is $30,700 for a person, one person. So if you have an income more than that, you can't live there? Correct. This is for What long. happens if you live there and have a stroke of luck and your income goes sky high? Uh, believe it or not, once you are in, you are officially in. Oh, you're and, in. And, oh, okay. and as long as you don't move, <laughs> I don't you know. can stay there. You, you, know, you, Usually, you, you can literally win the, win the lottery and stay there. Usually subsidized places right. don't allow anyone to stay there just they have to pay a lot more right that's not the case that's not the case okay thank you as long as they don't move once they move they're out of the they're out of the program okay thank okay. you but uh, just a few a couple other high topics that I can go to uh, we do do an annual plan and a five-year plan and uh, HUD right now is going to require us to look out at a 30-year plan coming up that we're going to have to pay for so we do have things like like the city has a master plan we're gonna have a 30-year plan we have a five-year plan different things that we're going there uh, surprisingly, probably most people don't realize this, but only about 40% of our residents are actually from Gladstone. Huh. And we have residents who have called or come all the way from California and Florida. In some cases, it may be the parents of somebody who's moved here and they want to get closer, but it's, it's completely different than what people think it is hmm. down there. Uh, one thing my board asked me to bring up was to let you know that uh, even though we don't pay property tax, we do pay payment in lieu of taxes to the city, and last year it happened to be $22,080. So we are putting money towards the city. You know, it's just not everything taking away from the city. We are putting some money back in there. And we are one of the largest utility users in the uh, city, believe it or not. Our annual utility budget alone down there is about $94,000. So, 
Uh, is, yeah. is there any other questions? Uh, yeah, we'll entertain questions. Yes. How many people do you employ there? I have four people total. Is that it for real? Correct. You must have some temporaries or part time, don't you? We do occasionally. We're trying to cut back on some of that because of just of our funding and that. Uh, we're in the process right now, I don't know if you've known it or not, that uh, President Obama has declared a $10.10 an hour minimum wage. Yeah. We're not sure if that's going to affect us. Uh, I've talked to HUD Detroit and also uh, other people, and the way it's worded, you can take it two different ways. Yes, we have to do it, and no, we don't, and I haven't got a firm commitment one way or the other whether we have to. Mike, are you telling us that could crowd out your ability to, to do things? Uh, it would. We. Down at the commission, we look at our dollars and our pennies down there. We, we have to. And so we look accordingly and we look at what we can do, who we can employ, different things like that. Now HUD does want us to employ, employ the residents down there, kind of as a boost to them. Uh, but that could hinder us, depending on how many people we hire in that. But our core number of individuals right now, we have four. That's including myself. And then we do have two part-time secretaries that come in occasionally when my assistant is, is not there. So, to cover that. Are there any other questions? Yeah, I, you talked about the decrease in federal funding. It, it, you would probably assume that on your operating budget, that means you have to make up that difference with higher rents. Yes and no. Uh, it depends on, there's a formula. So if we have a lot of people that have But you're keeping your rents, head above water, so somehow you're doing right, it. Right, right, we're doing that. What also happens is each year we get a Social Security increase, and so that does have a tendency to bump the rents up anywhere from 5 to $10, sometimes more, depending on the person. But we go on a yearly basis. And one nice thing down there is that about 30% of our residents down there pay a flat rent, which is kind of uncommon. I, I talked to HUD Detroit, and they were actually amazed that it was that high for us. But we try and do a mix if we can. It all depends on the applications and you know the timing of the applications and that people coming in there. But uh, as long as you can have a mix of people who can sustain that flat rent, and then others who have lower rents, you know HUD will make up some of that money, but they won't make it all up. Uh, that's how we've been able to do that. You, you mentioned your reserve for the. We're going to have budget right. hearings this week, and you're going to hear the city manager talk about mm -hmm. a, a reserve that, or a fund balance, we call it. Yeah. Same difference. Right for our general fund, which is our main operating fund there that we set last year and, and we're trying to hold to that. And the number is six yeah, months, is it? Two months, actually. Two months, months. okay. Right. He's got seven and a half months ahead right. of him, so. Uh, I came into a unique situation in that, and we also do multi-year budgeting. When I came in, I had five open budgets for five different years. Uh, we're down to two budgets, well, I, between two and three budgets, depending on when I get my funding in that. But what we've done and tried to do is HUD requires either $100,000 or four months worth of cash reserves uh, is what the recommendation is. If we don't have that, they will kind of, I won't say penalize us, but they will look at us and we'll get a lot of letters in that until we have that up there. But they also don't want us to have too much in cash reserves. And right now we should only have six months. We have seven and a half. I will have to get rid of some of that money. Uh, the reason is, is because in the past they have taken money away from housing commissions. I shouldn't say taken away money. What they've done and said, okay, you've got too much in cash reserves, use it up in your operating funds, and when you draw it down, then we'll start giving you money back again. We had uh, almost 13 months worth of cash reserves at one time. And what happened was is that they came to us and they were going to take it away from us. I declared an emergency that we had down there with the piping systems and that, and that's part of the water. We had a water problem down there. I was able to keep that money and put that money into the new plumbing that we have down there. So that's part of the so reason they, why. So in effect, they made you use your cash reserves they, they instead made, of right. applying for capital Correct. funds through HUD well, no, to replace right. some capital items. Well, no, yeah, what they would have done that. But what we actually ended up doing was being able to take those cash reserves, use that money to repair the basement. Plus, we still got our capital funds and our operating funds. So we didn't lose any money. Right. But you had to use it up for some capital right. projects. Right. We had, I, well, what we had to do is we had to declare an emergency and, right. and use of that. Otherwise, we would have lost it. And we were only one of two housing commissions in Upper Michigan that actually did not lose money. You mentioned you were confident that you had a good financial plan going forward. A lot of that has to do with keeping up with all the items that you've invested Correct. in, right? You, you, could, you could theoretically take a housing commission 
and neglect capital items to the point where you, you'd be so far behind Correct. you probably couldn't well, catch yeah. up, right? Right. Well, we are catching up on some things, and, it, and it's just the age of the buildings. We, we came to a point when a lot of things collided together all at the same time. What we've done right now, too, is also we put in a preventive maintenance program. And so we're actually replacing things that most people would say, well, why are you replacing that? Because we're no, we know they're going to fail within a year or two or three years. And if we replace them when they fail, it costs us, well, like a zone valve or something like that. If we have to call in an emergency center zone valve, it's usually anywhere from 50 to $100 more than if we're doing an apartment, we're doing it in there, they can get in there, they can get in and out quickly. So we automatically, when we, depending on where the apartment is, we may go in and completely recarpet, repaint, do zone valves. We, we look at the apartment as an entirety and the whole of what it is, and we try and put our money into there. So we try and reduce some of those you know, costs that you may get incurred in an emergency situation. Any other questions? You and I know each other very well, and we've discussed on the side before your, your, your juggling act down there, and, and I think you do a very good job. I'm, I'm confident you. in saying that, and um, I don't think we have to look to either one of these projects uh, becoming a problem for the city in our lifetimes. Right. We, we've, we've extended them at least one billion, I know, 15 to 20 years, and we're continuing. Well, if you if forward. you figure 20 more years that you're going to be operating there, Fairview Manor yeah. would be 65 years old at that point. Correct. Right? Yeah. But, and there are issues, but we're, we're overcoming them. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Lindahl. Thank you. Uh, I would ask that you would sign a declaration of trust for us. If, uh, we need a motion for that, correct? I, uh, I move that we approve the declaration of trust. I second it. Moved by Commissioner Nemchek, supported by Commissioner Bostrick to sign the Declaration of Trust with the Gladson Housing Commission. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that motion is carried. We're moving on to marina funding. This is, I think, Darla is going to discuss this with the commission. Um, Nicole's here with us tonight as well, okay. if you have any questions for her specifically. Um, in your packet, we gave you part of the presentation um, from a couple years ago before we applied for the funding to redo the harbor docks. And so that's where, the, where that information is coming from. We included the timeline. Um, grant application was due April 1st, 2012. Um, just to let you know, sometimes when we receive grant money and apply for it, the length of time between you know applying and the project actually being completed. Um, so our docks were completed. Uh, would we have June 3rd was our uh, grand opening down there this past summer. Definitely much needed, very much improved the look of the harbor down there. So when we applied for the money, the sources of uh, funding that we were looking at were um, $100,000 from the DDA, which we did transfer that, uh, $200,000 from Michigan Waterways, and we did receive that. And the other, um, this grant was a 50-50, and it was actually, we received a little bit more than $200,000 from Waterways. So the last um, $100,000 there, we were planning um, the, the the, the money that we receive from the docks, um, we do make a small profit every year. Um, we identified the previous profits there on the, on the last page. But most of that profit was in the general fund and not able to transfer to the marina fund when we created the marina fund. So going forward, the profits would pay back this loan or whatever we want to call it. Um, and then future dollars received from Dr. Mary Cretans are eligible to pay this back as well. Um, so we are looking to finance internally uh, $104,000 um, payback over five years at 2% interest comes out to roughly a $24,000 annual payment. Uh, so going forward, the profits would pay that back. Um, then at the end of five years, we start building up a, a more profit, or if we decide to apply for the next phase to fix the remaining docks, we can do that as well. I think we knew when we created a marina fund, we'd be looking at capital projects because the voters want and now have their own fund. Mm -hmm. Is that money coming from the, or would come from the electric fund? Electric fund cash. 
So wh why is there such a discrepancy from like 2009 there was 18,000 to 2010 was 5,000? Um, that was a, a timing issue. We send out our, um, if you have a slip down at the harbor, um, you pay a deposit and then the rest of your uh, rent, dock rent, and see that the next year, 2011, was 26000 yeah. We did receive money in advance and it didn't get transferred to the right year or something like that. Um, so, but if you average, you know, just average all the years together, and you know, around twenty thousand dollars is our annual profit. So that was a timing issue for the five thousand dollars. Probably wasn't accounted for properly, from what you just said. Yeah, <coughs> it was left in revenue in advance, or Should've it was in, in a different year. Revenue of the previous <coughs> year. Yeah. I'd move to approve internal funding. Support. Moved by Commissioner Gay. Support by. Commissioner Nemechek to approve the internal funding of the Marine Fund through a, a loan from our electric fund for the Harbor Dock project. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. The next item is you're asking, well, Michigan Municipal League is asking for a resolution of support. Uh, we've all pretty much heard, I think everybody's heard that the state has a budget surplus and they're thinking of various things they might want to do with it, including an income tax break for those individuals who pay income taxes in Michigan. The League would like, the, the League of Cities would like some of that money to come back to local units of government, which have It was really on the front page of the paper tonight. All right, there's two articles that I've got copied tonight. Uh, well, one of the items, the Michigan Municipal League, which we, we are a member of, they're opposing in, in, the proposed income tax legislation that would cut the, cut the income tax rate back and give some of that pro, uh, surplus back to taxpayers. The governor comes out tonight and says that he wants to boast, boost local revenue sharing, which includes counties, which have been out of the mix for a number of years now. They used to be in the mix for shared revenues from the state. And also some townships, which have been out of the mix, and then to, to bump up what cities are getting. And just to give you an idea, when we go to our budget meetings this week, Darla will, will be able to show you that our general fund, which is our main fund that, that we're interested in, that's where we provide most of uh, the, the governmental type services, not counting our utility funds or our street funds, which are important too. Uh, that, that fund is down $200,000. And so if you just plug $200,000 into the budget we're going to talk about for the general fund this week at our budget hearings, our, bud our general fund would have an entirely different look. And so what you saw tonight is the governor saying maybe we should share some of that with local units of government. And so we're being asked basically for a resolution of support tonight to say, please consider restoring some of the cuts that have been made to local units of government, which, which in turn have had to suffer through less ability to provide services that the citizens are still requesting government to provide. So that's basically what's before us tonight. Comments? I approve the resolution. Both to approve a motion. Support. Moved by Commissioner Nemechek and supported by Commissioner Gay to uh, support the resolution that's before us tonight to uh, urge the legislature to share some of the state's budget read surplus. Should we read the resolution? Uh, would you like to read that resolution, Commissioner Gay? <laughs> just, just so the people know the sure. resolution that we approve. <clears throat> City of Gladstone, resolution number 2014-01, a resolution in support of urging the legislature to use the state budget surplus to restore funds to local governments. Whereas City of Gladstone has experienced a significant decline in property value, which has caused unprecedented fiscal constraints, and whereas at the same time the City of Gladstone has confronted consistent reductions in state shared revenue as part of the cuts to state shared revenue statewide and whereas due to this unrelenting fiscal pressure the city of Gladstone has been compelled to reduce the level of municipal services historically provided to residents businesses and schools in our community and whereas these municipal services protect the health safety and welfare of our citizens and are an essential component of building a strong local economy and maintaining a vibrant community and whereas on January 10th, 2014, 
A state budget surplus was announced, which is part, which in part is a result of the governor and legislator, legislature taking six billion over the past decade that by law was supposed to go to local communities to fund local police and fire services, road maintenance, snow plowing, drinking water systems, and more. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Gladstone urges the legislature to partner with local communities to enable them to provide essential services such as police and fire, invest in critical infrastructure improvements, and create vibrant places that attract and retain talent. Be it further resolved that the City of Gladstone urges the legislature to take ownership of the fact that by taking local revenues to plug holes in state budget, they have helped create the fiscal crisis facing many local communities across Michigan. Even as spending on the state budget has increased 26% in the past decade or so, this is a critical time to reinvest in communities. Be it finally resolved that the City of Gladstone strongly urged the legislature to restore funds to local governments and to fix Michigan's broken municipal finance system. So, we have a motion and we have a support for that resolution. All those in favor of that, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that motion is carried. I received an email. I forwarded it to the city clerk, a young man named Logan Shupp. Sent me an email asking that he be allowed, he's a railroad buff, to be allowed to do some uh, restorative work on our steam engine that is located along the highway at the Delta Avenue exit to the city. And so our city clerk has put this on our agenda tonight. Looks like a ambitious young man and he's offering to do some free labor for us. So I think it's pretty much a no brainer. But we should uh, take some action on that. I, I just, I think this was a, this was a very refreshing email that you forwarded to me. Um, I thought it's, so too. It, it's, it's really, it's really nice to see, um, especially something that's not as, it's not as common nowadays as the, no. the, this particular um, interest. And I actually enjoyed reading this and I look forward to meeting this young man. His great great grandfather, a gentleman by the name of Russell Howe, was a Sioux Line engineer in the 20s to the 50s. He said, I, I don't know that name. Surprising, right? <laughs> so he has history in Gladstone. Um, I, I, would, I would like to see us provide him with you know, whatever support we can. Uh, I just, I, I always think uh, initiatives, especially of this nature, should be rewarded to the extent we can. And, I don't see anything uh, unreasonable at all in here that he's asking for, basically just support. Mm -hmm. You've had a chance to review it with your staff right now? Um, actually, no. we didn't. Last week we spent on the budget. But I'm familiar with um, a couple years ago when, um, what was that group that came through and we went down there and cleaned it? And we had the power washers down there and made sure everybody was safe and stuff, so. I just, you know, I would, you know, make sure that the, uh, the power washer, because sometimes that can take paint off. So, right. you know, whoever's <laughs> yeah. just, you want to take the, uh, as he indicated, the bird droppings and that off as long as it doesn't take the paint off. And I'm sure, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we can, we can handle making sure that that doesn't happen. Yep. Group, right, that was interested in kind of taking over that too or helping, you know, in years past with it. So we have a motion. Does the city own the locomotive? Yes, we do. Is there a lead person in town that kind of is in charge of it? There was when I worked here, but I don't remember who it was. Group, there was a couple gentlemen that had approached the city um, whether they're still interested. I think they're old railroaders. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what happens to old railroaders? They get older. Yeah. So there isn't anybody at the present time that. Nobody, you know, in, not in city employment, but nobody right now, yeah. With There's the nobody or that kind of thinks about it as being their right. project. Right. We're not going to be stepping on any 
No, and them. that's what I said. We could we could put them in touch or give the contacts of those people that had been interested in years past, you know, and who had done some maintenance on it. Yeah. Um, just maybe they could work together or collaborate together. So. Yeah, then he was talking about selling T-shirts. Yeah, right. The, the interesting thing he had in here is that the city of Holland, Michigan, holds a similar event with their steam locomotive, the Pier Marquette 1223, in the summer. Mm -hmm. you know. Hmm. So we have a motion. Do we have a support? I second. Motion by Commissioner Gay, supported by Commissioner Bostwick to approve the offer of assistance on our locomotive from Mr. Logan Shupp. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I think supervision is going to be a little key there. Uh, like, like Commissioner Gay says, there's a fine line between cleaning and removing paint. Well, I do remember that there was an emotional issue when I worked here. Uh, there were some people who felt the city needed to do more for that locomotive, and I think uh, the commission prodded the administration at the time there to do more work on it. And I remember when they went down there, they said we, had to, we have to be really careful that, that that metal is getting old and thin, and if you don't throttle down that, that's, that's what I'm concerned pressure. about. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the one of the things that he indicated in his uh, <coughs> in his email was. Um, also touching up paint, you know, cleaning out wheel bearing, other small things. So it, it kind of sounds like he's probably been involved to some extent, but I would agree. You know, he's 17 would, years old, we too. We would want to make sure that, yeah. 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 Are you saying the 17-year-olds are eager? Well, I've, some, <laughs> yeah, they don't know their own strength. Yes. <laughs> it's got to be a rhetorical question. Yes, it was very rhetorical. <laughs> All right, well. That is a go. The next item is the assessor contract, but uh, we're going to do an evaluation tonight of the assessor, as we talked about at our last meeting. So uh, I would hold that one off. At our last meeting, we did do an evaluation of the city clerk. It was a very good evaluation. Kim was very happy with our evaluation and uh, with the opportunity to, to talk about her, her employment with the city. That's what you told me. Uh, and as a result of that evaluation, we proposed a contract which we have before us tonight for action. I one on the uh oh. Since we <laughs> borrowed the lang legal language from another contract, it has the wrong title under fringes. That needs to read city clerk, not city manager. <laughs> Please. Okay. <laughs> I think that's important. <coughs> Anything, anybody have any comments on from the commission? No. Does it seem like what we were looking at, agreeing to? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. I move approval. I support. Moved by Commissioner Nemchek, supported by Commissioner Bostwick to approve the city clerk's contract for our evaluation and our agreement with the city clerk after our evaluation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, mm -hmm. motion is carried. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, Next item on our agenda is the Planning Commission's annual report for January 1 to December 31 of 2013. Since Renee's not here, I assume you're Renee tonight, Darla? I asked her if she normally went through this. Um, she was planning to be here tonight, but um, mixed up in schedules and wasn't able to stay after work tonight. So um, she said three years ago she kind of went through it, but the last couple years it was just put in the packet for information. Um, so unless there's comments, we accept it as is, without action necessary? It's just for your information. It's okay. it's not really a report that the city commission needs to approve or disapprove. Well, we have on our agenda, we have the various boards and committees mm -hmm. and commissioners report on committees they make it to. And I got to tell you, I rarely make it to a planning commission meeting. When Commissioner Olson was a commissioner, he generally went to planning commission meetings. So I don't know if anybody else goes to planning commission meetings, but I'm sure you know the people who serve there. They do a lot of good work for us. If not, we can put that on file if it's, it's okay with everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're back to, we're through new business. We're, we're going to come back to the assessor contract. The assessor is going to get the opportunity to either have her evaluation done in open session or closed session. She's indicated to me she's going to be looking at closed session. So we'll, we'll put that to the end of the meeting. So the public can hear. The next item is the city manager's reports. I have a few things tonight. Um, just for your information, we are approaching uh, 
30 plus um, service line freeze ups in the city of Gladstone. Um, water department, DPW, electric department, we're all um, helping the residents as much as we can. Um, if you have any problems with your water line, I know this isn't aired live, but when, when it is re-aired, um, please contact the water department. 428-3460 uh, is their phone number. Um, we will get to you as soon as we can. We're approaching the 1994 yep. bad freeze-up winter, so <coughs> um, we did get a nice email from one of the people that um, experienced a freeze-up at their home, 216 Michigan, Dan Wydra. Um, just couldn't thank the people and the staff enough for uh, their professionalism and, and taking care of the assistance with this frozen water line so it's nice to hear you know staff is professional and, and doing a good job when they're out there helping the residents do you have any idea do they have some sort of a heating they pass a current something? they pass yeah. a current through the line they hook up to a hydrant and they hook up to the residents and they pass a current through there and that current of course gets warm and it thaws the line mm -hmm. hmm. sometimes it can take a different path <laughs> it's happening from the hydrant to the to the home to the home yeah, and you pass a current interestingly enough or maybe not interestingly enough but to me it's interesting because i used to work in this business if you have a sewer freeze up in the winter you can't pass a current through it because it's not a it's not a metallic line and it's going to be frozen until spring hmm. unless they can get steam on it Um, the Communities of Distinction Production, I signed the uh, final authorization for them to move forward. Um, she said it would be uh, roughly four weeks before it moved on to its final stage. Um, and at that time, we'll get our final copy of that, and then it'll start being aired 34 times nationally, like the contract we have approved. Then you'll be a star. Yep. Um, I uh, met today with a new... Um, MEUW safety coordinator. We are, the city pay, buys 20% of, of this person and we share an employee with City of Norway, Crystal Falls, uh, Florence, Wisconsin. Um, I think that's it, but they're, they're looking for another city to, to join that. But um, Rick Schumard is the new safety coordinator. So he came to town today and um, kind of showed him where his office is and this is the position that helped us with all of our policies over the last couple of years and they have a we now have a formal training program that he's put in place and helped us with so definitely the previous employee really helped me when OSHA came to town they show up and knock on your door and say tomorrow morning eight o'clock I start inspecting all your facilities um, this person will come and they have experience with working with OSHA and um, keeping our fines and whatever as low as they can so Definitely an asset for the city. Um, busy week ahead of us here. Uh, DDA tomorrow morning, EDC tomorrow afternoon. Then our budget workshop starts from 5 to 7, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And most of Thursday, I will be in um, interviews for the special event coordinator position. Um, Nicole Sanderson, Parks and Recreation Director, and myself and two DDA board members will be interviewing four people for that. And lastly, I just wanted to share, Barry Lund, Public Works Director, went to a meeting last week. Um, the City of Gladstone, City of Escanaba, and the Landfill are partnering with Radio Results Network to do um, a radio ad campaign. If you remember, we talked about um, what people are putting in the recycle bin, and it's getting to the recycle center, and it's, it's ending up being more garbage than recycling. Um, if we don't take care of that, we're going to start getting fined for that. So... Um, they're looking at April, May time frame to do some, uh, we're all putting in some money to, for this campaign, um, a radio campaign. I also asked Barry to follow up with, um, we send out monthly utility bills. Can we take a picture of the top of that can so people know what's recyclable and what's not? And, you know, it costs about 300 bucks to put a, an extra sheet in with the utility bill. That's pretty minimal compared to, you know, five six thousand dollars a month you know penalty for what we bring to the recycle center so um, April May time frame so we're looking forward to getting more information about the ad campaign and and how to help people with recycling
That's all I have. All right, we're up to city commission and committee reports. There's usually uh, not anything in there. We have one board and commission report that was the planning commission 2013 report, which we just reviewed. We are back to public comment. Now's the time. No? Okay. We're up to city commissioner comments. We'll start with Commissioner Nemechek. Uh, no. Commissioner Bostwick. No. <laughs> Commissioner Gay. Everybody's talkative tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing either. Wow. <laughs> Except for it's cold. A couple of, uh, several items here out of articles that are written by a certain reporter in our audience tonight. Do a good job. Uh, Escanaba is maybe looking at disposing of their power plant. We've already taken care of that some time ago. They're also looking at a new farmer's market similar to what we did last year. So we're ahead of the curve as usual. Thank you. I did get some comments from some folks on snow removal. I forwarded them to the city manager for action. Uh, I think I shared the response to one that was in writing with the commission. I thought Darla did a fine job of uh, explaining some of the concerns that the resident had. Uh, I also interviewed Commissioner Matt and he will not be at our budget meeting so he's got some input he wants me to bring up. He t indicated he had spoke with you as well. So. Um, be everything I had, so we are up to city clerk comment, which you thought I was going to forget. But I have nothing either, so. <laughs> you get your chance and you get nothing. I know. All right, uh, so we're back to the Gladstone assessor contract and evaluation. So oh, the assessor has indicated she'd like to go into a closed session, which she has the right under law to do. To review our contract, we have a proposed contract that we're going to be talking about as well tonight with the city assessor, but it's going to be your opportunity also to meet the assessor and, and uh, find out how she does her job for the new commissioners. So uh, we need a motion to go into executive action. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Gay, supported by Commissioner Nemechek to go into executive session. That would be a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Gay? Yes. Commissioner Nemechek? Yes. Commissioner Bostwick? Yes. Commissioner Matten is excused, and Mayor Mackey. Yes. We are going into executive session to do the Gladstone.